Before starting to paint, I add uh, some felt gliders to the bottom. It helps maneuvering. The model and um, you don't scratch around on your workbench and furniture and so on and uh, sitting a little bit off the ground makes it look even more professional okay First order of business, as usual, is applying black paint. As usual, I'm just stay taking standard black paint from Vallejo. As you can see, most of the whole shape has been left open. Yeah, that's because it's going to be underneath the hull, so you won't see anything of it.
Okay, we're turning our attention to adding further paint to the seascape. This is about the most emotional aspect of creating the sea wave because everybody is different in what he sees when he looks at water. Many ship modelers prefer very blue water, uh, like from the Pacific. Um, but uh, to tell you the truth, if I look at water, I see shades of blue and green and gray. And that is due to the fact that the seascape will always mirror the actual weather above the seascape. So if you're having a very early morning uh, with no wind and no um, no clouds or what whatever you will be seeing um, mostly dark water um, and um, once the sky once the once the sun is up and the sky is getting uh, lighter blue the uh, water will be even more blue but as soon as you create motion in the water you will find that uh, lots of different shades of gray and green mix into the action and um, this is what I want to capture here. I have my um, seascape with a black base and added two different shades of gray and blue on top of it. So I have a very deep and dark base. Now I will be uh, creating the effect that the water is actually in action on the surface and uh, for this reason I had created uh, this little color chart. I have chosen a few colors that I want to use and blend and you see it's mostly grays and greens and there's only one actual blue inside and that will be only used to blend colors. Um, this is a process of yeah, bringing feel to your um, to your kit and to your presentation so the best way is to go on really with trial and error and uh, this is what I'm doing all the time and I'm, if I'm not satisfied I just take the airbrush and eradicate what I have done but what I will be doing first is to paint um, to dry paint with a big circular stiff bristled brush and I will be using um, is that focus RLM blue from Wally Ho. You can see this is like by the black cap you can actually see that this is uh, meant for airbrushing but there's uh, enough pigment inside to do the dry brushing. Uh, for the dry brushing I just uh, put the paint into a small cup and then I dab the brush in the paint until it's nicely saturated. Then in the next step I take some kitchen tissue and remove excess paint. More tissue here. This one was a little damp, so it's uh, taken a lot of paint away. And um, if you have, ki if you use kitchen tissue, this usually does have a structure and you can see by the time you're not smearing the paint like here but you're actually just taking paint off the brush in little amounts and you can judge that this is the right time to apply this to your seascape. So this paint will be brought onto the surface all over.
to add extra to add extra uh, structure to the surface I'm uh, taking a regular Kleenex and take individual layers of it and I rip them into small pieces with jagged edges I'm taking the the paint job with the paint residue and I add a window cleaning agent to the remainder of the paint stir that up properly uh, okay this had already dried so this is no good so window cleaning agent and a tiny drop of grayish blue paint blended into here along with the good old Elmer's white glue This will be the substance to fix wave structures onto the sea base. This is not enough glue. Get some more glue.
Mm-hmm.